Salutations dear viewers, this is George from Ireland and in this video I'm going to explain why the United Kingdom is not a racist country. So I'm making this statement and I'm principally intending to provide reasons to believe what I say is true, um, uh, not so much explaining how the UK came to be a non-racist country. Uh, I'm not pretending that the, that the United Kingdom is completely devoid of racialism, I wish it were, that might never occur. There might be something natural, bad, but natural, about racism. It could be that that's instinctive in people. Now, human instinct is not always good, and we should try and educate ourselves out of it. That's what being civilized is about. Recognizing our impulses are sometimes immoral, have to be controlled and defeated. Um, so, what's some of my evidence to suggest the United Kingdom is not overall a racist country? Uh, well, we could look at the massive immigration that's been over the past few decades, and that would not have been allowed by a country in which racialism was widespread. So certainly after the Second World War, there was significant Commonwealth immigration, and that was a tremendous boost to the United Kingdom, which desperately needed people to come and work. So at that time, um, people from Commonwealth countries, they had common citizenship with the United Kingdom. Some countries such as, say, Barbados or um, uh, Pakistan, part of the Commonwealth, people could come to the UK with no restrictions whatsoever. Now, I know Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, as it is now, became independent in 1947, but many other countries were colonies for a while, and certainly from the Caribbean countries, um, because they were reliant on the UK for foreign affairs and defence, they had that common citizenship with the United Kingdom. Um, so unfortunately, Commonwealth immigrants did experience some racism, but they're, they're in sufficient numbers now, British citizens and their grandchildren, even great-grandchildren born in the UK, they're part of the furniture and they are accepted by um, almost everyone. Um, the, the different uh, groups of immigrants and their descendants, they largely get on as well. So why would people come to the UK if it was so viciously racist? Now it's true the United Kingdom is, is quite a wealthy country, so for financial reasons, but if, if racialism was that severe and uh, that prevalent, then even prosperity would not be enough to attract people. There are laws against racism from the 1960s, the Race Relations Act, um, introduced under the Labour government, another one in the late 70s. So not to discriminate against people. I don't want anyone to be mistreated. The shocking thing is, uh, prior to 1968, people were allowed to discriminate against people in employment and housing and so forth. Uh, the, there's the infamous sign, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish and so forth. The thing about no Irish, I've only met one person ever who claims to have seen such a sign. So while there was a bit of hibernophobia in Great Britain, um, I think it was um, mild and not very widespread. Some people want to uh, claim this much coveted victim status, and perhaps I could too, too for advancement, claim to be an ethnic minority in the United Kingdom, which I am, arguably. Um, so that's all been outlawed for quite a long time. People have actively, actively promoted um, anti-racism. There's little bigotry in the bedroom. You see um, how many interracial marriages and relationships there are, and more and more people are mixed race. Going a bit like Brazil, where not so many people can claim to be entirely one ethnic group or the other. Brazil's got many severe social problems, but not racism so much. Um, when we look at the white minorities, um, it's difficult to say what a, a native Britain is, because obviously since ancient Roman times, or even before, there's been immigration and invasion. But, um, uh, so look, even look at the past two centuries, the United Kingdom had people arriving from, um, uh, let's say, the Netherlands, not so much, Jewish people, particularly from um, the Russian Empire in the late 19th century. The Israeli was Jewish, so his grandparents had moved from Italy, and he became Prime Minister um, in uh, 1874. Now, admittedly, he'd converted to Christianity, but he's from a distinct ethnic group, and his surname was a bit of a giveaway, De Israel E. Um, so, whilst there was some prejudice against him, it was not insurmountable, and Jewish people were elevated to the peerage and so forth. And there's been significant Polish immigration, uh, Italian, Spanish, French immigration in, in the 20th century. The fascinating thing is the way the white minorities tend to intermarry, and after about three generations they've completely blended into the mainstream um, white British community. Whereas people from visible minorities, people of, of different colours from white, they tend to remain quite distinct um, and are not always marrying outside that group. Or if you look at P British Indians, for instance, 
the wealthier and more educated they are, the more actually more likely they are to marry outside the Indian community. And the poorer and less educated they are, the more likely they are to marry within that community. Um, nothing bad or good about marrying within one's community, marrying out one's community. But if one marries outside one's ethnic or religious community, then one surely can't uh, have a serious prejudice against people from other ethnic religious groups. Um, well, what's the prime example of integration would be Meghan Markle, this American woman who's um, uh, half black, probably rather less than that because most Af African Americans are at least a little bit white. And she's married Prince Harry, it may not have escaped your notice. Uh, so an endorsement from, from the royal family, of course Prince Harry required the uh, Queen's permission to take to wife. Um, so uh, I'm not saying racism is a total chimera, but it's not uh, so widespread as some would pretend. Because wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just um, cry victory? Have we have triumphed over racism? As I say, a total defeat of racism might never occur, but it's something we can strive towards. But there is a race relations industry, people who are eager to nurse grievances and to bear grudges to raise Cain about uh, terrible wrongdoing from bygone centuries. Um, and this race relations industry would be out of a job uh, if they didn't have these bugbears. So they desperately want racism to exist. Um, and it wouldn't it be good if we could say, yeah, you know what, we've done it. The war is over. Racism is, is uh, in the bin. And so we can all be happy and move on. I think the vast majority of people in the UK of different uh, races get on just fine most of the time. So we mustn't make out a mountain of a molehill if somebody says the wrong thing. One of my friends who's a Britisher, Sri Lankan parentage, and he said, racism is something I experience every week, not every day. Now, better that he didn't experience it at all. We could of course be wrong, it's not so uh, widespread. And one of my British Egyptian friends, he's saying, Sometimes I think the UK isn't racist whatsoever, but other times I think it's quite seriously racist. I'm minded to think that his first uh, view was the accurate one. So there is anti-Muslim prejudices, which is not quite the same thing, since Islam is a faith, it is not an ethnic group. I could become a Muslim. There are Muslims of all sorts of ethnic groups. Now it's true that they predominate um, in North Africa, uh, in the Middle East, these two overlap obviously, a bit of Southeast Europe, South Asia, into some of Southeast Asia. Central Asia. So there are certain ethnic groups which are mainly Muslim, but uh, although one's born into a religion, one can leave it. I realize that uh, for Muslims this can have serious consequences if they um, convert to another faith. Um, but people are prejudiced against Muslims or prejudiced against, I suppose, a group of ideas, many of which are laudable or harmless, praying the direction of Mecca or abstaining from pork or something like that. Giving money to charity, well that's morally good. Um, so racism is largely gone. If the UK was so racist, so many people wouldn't be doing everything, spending their life's fortunes to get in. Uh, wouldn't be risking life and limb to crawl into the back of a uh, lorry to get out at Dover and then uh, work in the black economy. No pun intended. Um, so the UK uh, is good to all and people can get citizenship after five years and there are plenty of people in high office from all sorts of ethnic uh, minority backgrounds, members of parliament, cabinet ministers, and so forth. Uh, bishops, archbishops, uh, officers in the army, it goes on and on. And it's true that certain um, ethnic groups have had a better record at gaining preferment than others. So really the UK is not a racist country. I've known many which, where racism uh, is more widespread and uh, more severe. Um, of course, occasionally people have been murdered for their ethnicity, When's that, when's that the last time that happened in the UK? I'm not sure, not very often. Of course, even once is too often. I want it to never happen. But I think we can afford to give ourselves a pat on the back and say that enormous progress has been made and race, race relations in the UK are pretty good.